Hello everybody, I'm Matthew with the American Heritage Museum. Welcome to Tank Basics. In this series, we'll be covering everything that makes a tank a tank, from their nomenclature to their anatomy. This episode's focus is on the tracks and running gear. Different tanks of different eras use different kinds of wheels, tracks, suspension, and just about everything else related to the running gear. And although all tanks require the same basic components to operate, they often vary wildly in their execution, as we'll see today. All right, so we're here at the left side of this M26A1 Pershing to learn some of the basics of running gear. Now, what is running gear? Running gear is a term that refers to everything going on in the outside of a tank below the fender. So that refers to the tracks, the wheels, as well as the tank suspension. Now let's break down the individual components that make up the running gear. So starting at the outer edge, we have the tank's tracks. This is the only part of the tank that actually touches the ground. At the front of this vehicle, we have our idler wheel. This is the wheel in charge of maintaining proper track tension. If a tank's tracks are improperly tensioned, if they are too loose, they run the risk of falling off. Along the bottom, we have the tank's road wheels. These are the wheels that support the weight of the vehicle, so they're the wheels with the suspension. Along the top, we have return rollers. These wheels help the track safely and smoothly ride across the top of the running gear. As for that spiky wheel at the back, that is our drive sprocket. This is the only powered wheel on the vehicle and what actually drives the tank's tracks. Now that we have the basics down, let's take a closer look at the Pershing's running gear. Starting at the tracks, the Pershing's tracks are made up of three main components, end connectors, track blocks, and center guides. The track blocks bear the chevron pattern to provide traction for the vehicle, the center guides guide the tracks as they run through the wheels of the running gear, and the end connectors hold the whole track assembly together. Now for the idler wheel, the wheel in charge of track tension. Most tanks do this by having the idler wheel mounted onto an adjustable arm to manually tweak track tension. The Pershing, on the other hand, has its idler wheel mounted onto the same arm as the front road wheel. So when this road wheel raises up to match a hump and terrain, the idler wheel pushes forward, maintaining tension. Now onto the road wheels. As mentioned before, these are the only wheels supporting the weight of the tank. So in turn are usually the only wheels attached to any suspension. The Pershing uses six road wheels per side attached to torsion bar suspension, which will be covered in more depth in a later episode. The Pershing also has this small gap in each road wheel to accommodate the center guide of the tracks. Up top we have the return rollers. The Pershing uses five of these per side, also bearing the same gap in the middle to sandwich the center guide as the tracks move over the top of the running gear. And lastly, the drive sprocket. The Pershing's drive sprocket has teeth on the edges to grab onto the end connectors of the tracks pulling the tracks around the vehicle, as well as this small channel in the middle to maintain the center guides. All right, now let's take a look at the running gear of the M5A1 Stewart. Right off the bat, we're gonna notice a lot of major differences in the suspension, the idler wheel, and even the tracks themselves. Let's start with the tracks. Unlike the Pershing, the Stewart's tracks are only made up of track blocks and end connectors, with the end connectors doubling as track guides. Another difference from the Pershing is that the Stewart's drive sprocket is in the front instead of the rear. This tells us that the transmission is also in the front, requiring a long drive shaft to transmit the power from the rear mounted engine. Another thing of note is that the Stewart uses external bogies for its suspension and road wheels. So unlike the Pershing where it requires the internal torsion bars, all of the suspension of the Stewart is bolted onto the exterior using no interior space. 
The Stewart also uses return rollers, but instead of two wheels cupping around track teeth in the middle, this is two track teeth cupping around one wheel in the middle. Something unique about the Stewart is that its idler wheel essentially doubles as a fifth road wheel, being attached to a pivoting arm with a volute spring for suspension, but it still acts as a conventional idler wheel with its tension adjustment system right here. All right, now let's take a look at something foreign, the Soviet T-3485. This tank bears a lot of differences from the American tanks we just looked at, so let's get right into the specifics. Starting at the tracks, the T-34 also uses center guides, similar to those we saw in the Pershing, but unlike the last two, the T-34 uses dry single pin tracks. So instead of using a system of track blocks and end connectors, the T-34's tracks are put together by taking two plates, butting them together, and joining them with a full width pin. One minor downside of dry pin track is that if there's nothing retaining the pin, it's gonna wanna rattle out of place. So the Soviets found a very simple fix for this issue by adding these little track ramps to the rear of the T-34 so that as the vehicle drives, if a pin starts to rattle out of place, that ramp will knock it right back into the track where it belongs, keeping the track together. As for the idler, the T-34's idler is mounted at the front of the vehicle and is tensioned by way of a worm drive. For road wheels, the T-34 uses five large wheels on either side with a small gap in the middle to accommodate the center guide. The T-34 also uses Christie-style suspension, a suspension type that will be covered in a later episode. In terms of return rollers, we have no return rollers. The T-34 uses a slack track system, so instead of having return rollers, it just lets the track run freely across the top of the road wheels. For the sprocket wheel, the T-34 has its sprocket at the rear, and unlike the last two with exposed teeth and the outer edges, the T-34 uses these small rollers hidden inside the wheel to grab onto the center guides and pull the track that way. All right, and for our final example, let's take a look at this German Panzerkampfwagen 5 Panther. As usual, we'll start with the tracks. The Panther also uses dry single pin track, just as the T-34 does, but on the Panther, each track link has two center guides, as well as a pair of holes for the sprocket wheel to engage with. Now, to get a better view of the rest of the Panther's running gear, we're going to pull off a few of these Schutz and armor plates. With those plates out of the way, we can get a better view of the sprocket wheel. The Panther has its sprocket wheel at the front of the vehicle, with its teeth interacting with these holes within the track links, while the center guides run in between the rows of teeth. An interesting design feature of the Panther's running gear is its interleaving road wheels. This is a pretty common design among World War II era German vehicles where the road wheels overlap one another to better distribute the vehicle's weight across its tracks. Like the T-34, the Panther also uses a slack track system, letting most of the track links run freely across the top of the road wheels only using one return roller per side hidden just behind the sprocket wheel to guide the tracks onto the teeth. And lastly, the idler wheel. The Panther's idler wheel runs between the tracks two rows of teeth and is adjusted by way of an eccentric arm. All right, so this just about concludes our first episode of Tank Basics. Now, keep in mind, this video doesn't show you all the possible combinations of the running gear components we just learned about, nor does this show all the running gears to ever exist. The scope of this video is to just give you a basic understanding of what the different components are, what they're called, and how they work. You can use the information you learned here to go and identify the components on other tanks running gear. That's a sprocket! And this information isn't exclusive to just tanks either. This goes for all tracked vehicles, including half tracks and even construction equipment. 
I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please consider dropping a like and even subscribing, as it really helps us out. As always, I'm Matthew with the American Heritage Museum. Thank you for watching.